So today we're going to look at some demos to help us understand soil function. Um, you know, we talked about the definition of, of soil function. Um, so we've got a couple of trays right here. A couple of trays. So can you see any differences in these trays? Can you see a difference in the color? Um, maybe a difference in the, the aggregation. This one, uh, this tray has is, is got a lot more dust to it. This, this tray has got more, more aggregates to it. So here, here's the deal. These two trays, even though they look pretty, pretty different, they're actually mapped exactly the same soil type. So, so when I went through this course several years ago, these, these demonstrations um, were one of the most eye-opening things I had ever seen. And so we're going to do those for you guys here today as part of this. So we've got two trays here. The difference is what? They're the same soil type. The difference is management, okay? This tray, this tray right here has been tilled for, a, for, for many years, conventional tillage, farmed every year. This, this tray right here is a no-till field, hasn't been tilled, hasn't has any conventional tillage in it for a long time. So we're going to take a couple of aggregates. This first demonstration is, um, it's called a slate test, okay? And so what it does is it measures the ability and, and the relationship of soil with water. It, it measures the ability of the soil to slake, okay? Slake is not just a term in soils, it's a term this simply means to fall away, okay? So we've got two air-dried uh, air aggregates here. And so you can call them an aggregate. You can call them a clod. What's, what's the difference to you in, the, in an aggregate or a clod? So to me, a clod, if you would ask a farmer, most of them are going to tell you a clod is a chunk of soil that's formed under, under pressure and compaction, wetness, pressure, and compaction. Whereas an aggregate is a chunk of soil, the same soil, sand, silt, and clay, a little organic matter, but it's a chunk of soil that's made under up of natural processes um, from biology and roots. And, you, and you'll learn more about that as we go. But again, two air-dried aggregates. One comes from a long-term tilled soil. One comes from a no-tilled soil. Map the same soil type. We've got a couple of cylinders here. We're just gonna set them in and maybe we're going to set them in there and now as the water soaks in you can see the air bubbles coming out so we know the water's soaking in but already you can start to see some differences occurring you can see the water you can see the the water in this side right here see the the individual particles of sand silt and clay are beginning to break loose. As that water soaks in, those individual particles are falling apart. They're breaking loose off of there. So, again, we'll just watch it for a, for a couple of minutes here. So now think about this. this is, these are the same soil type, map the same. Imagine now this field, is it going to be more susceptible or less susceptible to erosion compared to this field? Okay, huge differences there, yet map the same soil type, same hydrologic group, everything else is the same. Um, and so we'll just watch that for a couple of minutes here, again, as, as the water's soaking in. So you'll learn as you go through this course, you'll learn that it's the biology that holds, that creates the glues that holds that soil together. Um, the biology is what creates the, the secretions in the soil, the roots create those exudates that you'll learn about that hold that soil together. And in a few minutes, you'll see this is just going to be completely gone, okay? And as that's going, we'll kind of start talking about our next, our next demonstration here. We'll just let that continue to fall. Um, you can see the clarity of the water. So think about, think about water quality downstream from this field compared to this field. This one's, this one's just completely clear, isn't it? As opposed to this one. And it's just going to continue. As that water soaks in, it creates pressure in those individual particles of sand, silt, and clay that make up that clod. 
begin to break and begin to fall away. Okay? So now, as we go to our next, next demonstration, we'll continue to let that, let that react a little bit. So our next demonstration is an infiltration demonstration. So what part of the soil does water actually infiltrate through? If, if I was going to pour water on this table right here, if I pour water on that table, did the water soak through that table? It didn't, did it? What would I have to do to this table to get water to soak through it? I'd have to drill holes in it, wouldn't I? I'd have to put holes in the table. The soil is the same way. Water can't go through a solid like this table, and if the soil is solid, the water can't go through the soil. So it has to have pore spaces in the soil for the water to go through. And so if we have a soil that in the presence of water, and think about it, this is, this is just water soaking into this aggregate. It's not water pounding on the surface of the field. It's not water rushing across the field. If we add a little bit of disturbance, a little bit of motion, look how much, just a little bit of motion, look how much more movement we get from that soil as compared to this one. We can move it. And we may get some pieces breaking off the outside, but they're not individual particles of sand, silt, and clay. They're, they're small microagates, and, and there's really very little uh, discoloration, sedimentation in the water itself. Again, as compared to this one. So, if we have soil that in the presence of water, in the presence of rainfall, falls apart like that, What's it going to do to infiltration? Okay, so we've got our two. We've got our two rainfall simulator. We're going to put some soil in here. This is our this this one right here again is our healthy soil. We're just going to set some soil in here. Get a couple inches of soil in there. Okay, we've got holes here. We've got holes in the bottom. We're going to make it rain. Now we'll do the same thing with our tilled soil. really close here. Put a little fines around the outside just to make sure we don't have any preferential flow. Okay? So, so one of the things that people talk about doing tillage, you know, when I when I grew up um, on a farm, I was taught we had to we had to till the soil to get seed bed. We had to till the soil to control weeds. We had to till the soil to take out compaction. Um, and so you saw me put this soil in these containers right here. How, how much compaction is in this cylinder right now? Virtually none, right? Because you saw me, I just fluffed that soil in there. No compaction. So now we're going to make it rain. And again, as we, as we make it rain and watch this demonstration, <clears throat> think about aggregate stability. <clears throat> That's the term that, I, that, that you're going to learn as you go through this course, you're going to understand aggregate stability very, very well. I think if, if there was only one feature that I could measure <clears throat> when it comes to the soil, it wouldn't be a particular nutrient, it wouldn't be organic matter, it would be aggregate stability. Aggregate stability tells you more about the soil than any other single feature, I believe. Okay, And again, so, so aggregate stability is how stable the soil is in the presence of water. When it gets wet, does those, do, do those aggregates hold their shape or do they collapse and dissolve? If the soil collapses and dissolves like this, what's going to happen to our, to our pore spaces? Remember, water has to, has to go through the pore spaces. Water doesn't flow through a solid. Water flows through the pore spaces, the voids in the soil. So, we're going to add some water here. We're going to make it rain. You can see it raining through there. So as the water, as, as, it, as it begins to rain in these little demonstration cylinders, so this one right here, <coughs> This is our healthy soil again. The water's running through it. 
almost as fast as it rains, isn't it? Because why? Because the aggregates, just like this one, these aggregates hold their shape and the water just goes right through them and they stay there. As opposed to this cylinder, if you look at it, we'll turn it around for you. Why isn't it? You see the water stacking up on top. Because just like this soil right here, as it rains, those, those soil particles, those small aggregates collapse and dissolve, sealing the surface of the soil over. Even though we had just tilled this, we had just fluffed it up, there was no compaction in it because this cylinder of soil did not have any good aggregate stability. Okay, again, aggregate stability is the term that you need to understand. It's the most important feature of the soil. So, so if this was a field, this was a crop field, this water, where would all this water have gone? It, we're, we're, we're actually trying to hydraulically force water through that. If this was a field that had any slope, it would all be gone, wouldn't it? It would not be available for future crop production. It would have, have ran off very quickly, causing flooding, causing erosion. Um, but yet, these two, these two cylinders are mapped exactly the same soil type. They're the same soil type. The difference is long-term management. And that was something that we just didn't understand, you know, for, for decades. We thought as long as the soil was mapped a certain type, that was, that was all that mattered. Now we understand that management influences biology, which influences aggregate stability. Um, you know, when I, started, when I started my career 32 years ago, we had the term aggregate stability, but we were taught it was based, it was an, an inherent uh, soil characteristic, not a dynamic soil characteristic. Now we realize that it changes very quickly. Um, we can take with the management some of the management techniques that you're going to learn about um, over the over the next few days in this course. We can take we can take this degraded soil and maybe not make it quite as good as this, but we can turn it pretty close into two or three four years. I can take this soil with all the things that we're going to talk about and come pretty close to this in two or three or four or five years. But guess what? I can take this soil and do tillage to it and in two or three or four or five years turn it into this soil. We can, we can degrade it that fast. Okay. So now, again, and, and we'll sit here and watch this. This will eventually soak through, but, but you know, and that was a pretty hard rain, right? We, we had about an inch of water in just a few minutes right there. But our rainfall events today are coming much harder than they used to. Um, and so do we only want to capture the nice easy rains? No, we want to capture all of the rains. We want to get them to infiltrate so they don't cause flooding so we can have production out of them. Um, another little demonstration that we'll do here is, is it's, it's kind of a of a half and half. It's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a slate demo. We take some sink strainers, we we take some small crumbled up aggregates. So these are kind of mini aggregates. They're not big ones. Um, we put several of those in here into this sink strainer. We'll do the same with our tilled soil. We'll do the same with our tilled soil. This is kind of like a like a, almost like a slump test if you're if you know anything about concrete okay so we've got a couple of couple of uh, sink strainers with some soil again this side is our long-term tilled soil and so what we're going to do is we're just going to wet them a little bit we've got a couple of glasses here and so you can get two or three two or three things again this is kind of like a Kind of like the, the slate test that we talked about a while ago. Give them just a minute here to let them soak. You can see the difference in the water. But then the real test comes here. Okay. We dump that one. We dump that one. And so then you look at the difference in the soil. This one 
This is our good soil. Dramatic difference, right? This one, this one right here is just mush compared to this one we can actually still have some aggregates so that's going to translate into a lot of things for a farmer this one's going to take 10 15 20 percent more fuel to drive through this field to harvest as compared to this field um, this one's going to infiltrate water a lot better than this one just, just tremendous differences. So these demonstrations, there's, there, and there's many others that you can do, um, but we have found that these demonstrations right here are really the core to this course that you're gonna that you're gonna go through. Um, these we do these at the beginning of this course to to set the stage so that you can understand, you know, just because the soil is mapped. A certain type. I, I work in Iowa, I work in Missouri, and I was really concerned sometimes when I went to northern Iowa, you know, they've got some of probably the best soil in the world. And I was really concerned that that really, really good, high organic matter uh, north, northern Iowa soil um, wouldn't, wouldn't slake. But you know what, Th those, those worries were totally unfounded because even those really, really high organic matter good soils, if they are tilled, they fall apart just like this. And if they're really healthy, they hold together just like this. <clears throat> We've had people do these demonstrations um, literally with soils all the way from Florida to Canada, east coast to west coast. And <clears throat> while they don't all act exactly the same, there is without a doubt the same differences from a, from a healthy soil to a degraded tilled soil. <clears throat>